Here's the scenario. You've been injured in a serious accident. The doctor says your recovery could take months, maybe even years, yet your insurance company is denying your claim every step of the way. If something like this happens to you, call me, Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Personal Injury Law. We have offices in Toronto, London, Peterborough, and now Kitchener-Waterloo. Visit goldfingerlaw.com and get us working for you. Okay. It's tough in these situations. I don't I don't know what to discuss really or what to do first. So first of all, obviously you're joining the Raptors Reaction Podcast. I'm your host, Samson Folk. But I don't know if people just want me to gush about the game that Scotty had and some of the things that Precious was able to do, late shot making from Gary, you know, moments for Pascal and Fred, and what was a really, really fun game. Or if you know y'all want to hear me lament what went wrong what was you know probably under the Raptors control that they failed to control in a meaningful way and what kind of just went sideways in the most sideways way possible so I think probably we'll start with Scotty and then we'll get into all this stuff that went wrong because you know losing to LeBron and the Lakers is LeBron you know gives you like 36 Westbrook hits four of seven threes and gets a triple double and just gets that late steal and hits a three is like sometimes teams shoot really well. The The Lakers hit 19 threes. And some of that is the Raptors over helping. Some of that is the Raptors, you know, blowing coverages defensively, but a lot of it is shooting talent. And the Lakers started out, I think, 0 for 16 in the game they played earlier this week. And now, they they make 19 on 44 percent. If those are the breaks, those are the breaks. But okay, so Scotty Barnes, I just put out this video for Yahoo Sports, wherein I break down why he's such a special isolation scorer and how he does it in a completely unique way. He is singular in the NBA. This is something I've talked about before, and this game I think is an excellent example of why he is so unique, and the multitude. <laughs> or I, the multitudes of his game showed up, I should say, because he he was so tremendous in this game as a guy making waves, off ball, working for offensive rebounds, trying to assert his dominance that way, helping clean up defensive rebounds, the grab-and-go aspect of his game that Pascal Siakam has ceded more to him because Pascal is a great grab-and-go player. Pascal and Scotty are great grab and go together because Scotty does the early work. Scotty posts early and Pascal will deliver him layups. Pascal, the, it can be the same way the other way around. Scotty can hit Precious on the break or whatever. Like this stuff is really fun and really good. And Scotty did that. But in the half court, he was just such an overwhelming presence for the Lakers to deal with. He started off the game. Yes, he goes right to that hook shot. He's one of the best performing contested hook shot shooters in the NBA. I believe he's third in percentage. I think he shoots 58%, which is awesome. It's terrific. But also just being in the middle of the floor and kind of mucking up what the Lakers wanted to do because they didn't have a lot of size to throw at him. Dwight Howard started out this game, yes, but he had a lot of, he was mostly focused on Pascal and uh, Pascal and Cam. And I think that's where most of his focus was. And Barnes saw that there was room for him to take over, room for him to find angles to get to the bucket. And if they put a guy like Austin Reeves on him, or even LeBron James, Malik Monk, Westbrook, you know, Stanley Johnson, even the Avery Bradley, let's say. Basically anybody who wasn't Wenyan Gabriel or Dwight Howard, Scotty was overpowering. And that even even LeBron, because LeBron doesn't have as much interest in playing defense as he once did. And yeah, he just this, oh man, he pursues the airspace like nobody I've ever seen. And the way he's able to get up, get to his spot, be comfortable in the middle of the floor when people are reaching in, he just goes straight to that Statue of Liberty push shot, his little hook, all these types of things. And he gets to his spot and he makes things happen. And when he ends up scoring 31 points, you know, he did hit one three and it was Pascal had that drive early, swung it out to the corner and he hit it. But this game was mostly for him. All the damage was done from the middle of the floor. He, he hit one step back midi, which was nice. It was a nice little fader. 
But on top of that, it's just always driving downhill, always looking for seams to punch through and working off the ball too. And like the Raptors in the fourth quarter, they ran this little horns quick hitter. So horns is when there's two guys, you know where the free throw line is. Imagine you take like a very big step up from the free throw line and well, the elbows, let's say. You're, it's the elbows, but elevated, like the top of the three-point line. You have two guys there, one guy at the top, and then you have two guys in the corner. This is horns. That's what the configuration is for offense in basketball. And they run this little quick hitter for Scotty to put the entry pass to the top of the horn and kind of cut through, and they run that little screen for him and just to see if they can get him into the middle of the court. And what he did was he caught it, saw that the, the double was coming, faked a pass, sent the double the other way and then took a like a pound dribble and a hard jump stop into the lane and finished at the front of the rim. It wasn't dunk or anything, but that's just an incredible awareness. The, the term is proprioception, where your body is in space and where things are around you in space. It was great awareness of where the defenders were. It was great awareness and use of his tangible skills. It was awesome. And even on top of that, just having some of those horn sets just having him dribble into the paint with misdirection and get that huge dunk, the work that he put in on the defensive end to get out on the break a couple of times. He was so, so good in this game. And it wasn't done mostly with jumpers. This wasn't mostly like, oh yeah, he's having a hot shooting night. No, this is strength. This is mobility. This is touch. These are repeatable actions that he's stepping out and doing and repeating. And he, he did it like f- for the full game. And yes, at the end of it, he had the turnover. Precious gave him kind of a, a hot potato. And Precious maybe should have tried to take the fouls and, and gone to the free throw line. But Precious gave him a hot potato. Scotty thought he had it. Russ poked it loose and then hit the three to send us into overtime. And then once we were in overtime, Scotty did have that turnover at the end. But it looked like he, you know, he very well could have been fouled. But Regardless, he didn't get to the position that he wanted and he wasn't able to imprint on the game in those possessions. He had trouble with that. And these are learning experiences. You definitely heard them say it on the broadcast. If you watch with the broadcast, I don't know if everybody does. Maybe you listen to podcasts and just watch hoops while you do it. But the broadcast talked about, you know, learning experience. And that's probably what they'll say or probably the way that Scotty, if it's ideal, is going to take it. You know, he dominated a game with LeBron James in it. He dominated a game when he shared the floor with Pascal and Fred. And he like for large parts of this game, Scotty was the best player on the floor. That's no small thing. That's, that's huge. And, you know, shout out to him. Even if mistakes were made at the end, they, uh, I, I still thought it was, uh, just a tremendous performance. I did the quick reaction. I gave him an A plus would have gave him an A plus plus if it was available because he was so damn good. And, I don't think this is the last we see of performances like this. I think that he's finding something. He's finding a groove as well. And uh, yeah, I think we can look forward to a lot more of this, obviously, in his career. But we might even see another performance like this this season, maybe a couple. He he just really seems like he's he's getting it now. His reads of the floor are tremendous. And he's looking for his own offense a little bit more. Okay, now, what went wrong in this game? Obviously, the turnover late is no good. Uh, Precious, yeah. Try and draw that foul, brother. I know you're not the best free throw shooter, but it's better than, you know, forcing the the grenade into Scotty's hands. But if these guys just hang on to it, they go to the line, they probably win the game, which is a depressing thought, but they didn't. The Lakers got the steal they needed. Westbrook hit the shot that he had to. And, you know, that's that's the way the game breaks out sometimes. And also, I was a bit confused why Nick Nurse at, you know, the, he kept... Scotty out for a long portion of the second quarter, like a very long portion. I, I don't think he got back in until the, I think the six minute mark or sorry, the four minute mark. And he, he had played like a minute and a half at the start of it, but it was a weird rotation for Scotty tonight. And like when, when he's dominant, you don't like the Pascal played 46. You don't like that Fred played 46 and Scotty played 42, especially since Scotty only had one foul tonight. I thought that was a bit odd especially since Scotty started the game so well. Obviously, he's the coach. He knows the fitness level, and maybe he's having an ongoing conversation with Scotty. But Scotty genuinely, you know, he can he can accept the mantle of best player on the Raptors for this game. He showed out to that degree tonight, and uh, he he didn't get played the most where he probably should have. 
Another tough thing, well, two tough things that really stand out is that Precious Achua, it was like the Raptors completely misused his skill set in a team defense sort of way because Precious was tremendous on ball, forced LeBron into so many fadeaway shots. And did LeBron hit some? Sure. But LeBron wasn't getting to the rim ever with Precious, and he didn't need the help. And Precious, the team was super help-oriented when Precious was on ball. They really, really were. But they weren't help-oriented when Precious was off ball. And Precious, he obviously, don't get back cut. Kids, anybody out there listening who likes basketball, plays basketball, don't get back cut. Try your best not to. You know, it's it's painful to watch for everybody and it's not good for your team. But they they weren't help oriented when he got back cut and they didn't they didn't shift and help when he was getting back cut. It was just LeBron straight to the bucket or something, you know, very beneficial for the Lakers happened. But they were so help oriented on ball. And that's like a very, a very narrow view of awareness and defensive help, I think. The Raptors. If you are a help-oriented team, you should be able to help when guys are, you know, getting beat off ball. Your your defense should be able to shade accordingly. And especially when LeBron is such a big force in what the Lakers like to do offensively. If Austin Reeves is on ball or something, or even Russell Westbrook, who, you know, Russell Westbrook got his stats in this game, but he certainly didn't drive a lot of what the Lakers were doing. He, he scored 22 points, but it wasn't like a tremendous showing or anything like that. You have to pay attention as a team to play as a help side unit. And they helped in all the wrong places and then didn't help in the ones that they needed to. I, I, I just didn't like that because, you know, like Precious is such an overwhelmingly terrific on-ball defender. I've written about this, uh, you know, the, the broadcast and, you know, more of the media is finally starting to catch up and talk about it, which is great. He's a tremendous defender, but he does have gaffes and most of them do come off ball and they did tonight, but the Raptors didn't help when they needed to in that scenario. And then overhelped when they didn't have to when he was on ball, which led to wide open threes for players like Avery Bradley or Austin Reeves or something like that. Even when in Gabriel, it's like you have to know what the strengths are for Precious Achua, and they could have left him in isolation, and he would have done well in LeBron, and they wouldn't have gotten some of those looks from three. But they overhelped when they didn't have to, and they didn't help when they needed to. I thought that was that was disappointing. And then the other disappointing thing is that Fred, from the All Star break onward, you know, two of nine from three tonight. He's at like eight twenty eight percent from three since the All Star break. And Gary Trent Jr. before this game was at thirty two percent from the field from the all-star break onward. Like, thank God Scotty has been turning the corner. Thank God Pascal has been so good. And I think Precious also qualifies as a guy who's punching above his expected um, weight or his expected impact, especially when we consider the offensive side of the floor, his three-point shooting, of course. But guys like Fred and Gary have been largely bad since the all-star break. And that's that's really tough to overcome. And in a game where the Raptors, yes, they did score 123 points. A lot of the problems on defense were, you know, what I highlighted, like overhelp, just a really narrow view of what help is as a defense and, you know, failing in a lot of regards. And, and not just limited to the precious situation, but as a team on breakdowns and stuff like that, just helping so much on ball when guys have the ball contained, but failing when it's just like the defensive context has changed just a little bit. But for, in a game where they score 123, I know it sounds silly to complain about Fred's shot making, but, you know, under 30% since the All-Star break, Gary at 32%. These are tough hurdles to climb, to jump over as a team when there isn't much shooting going on. And Precious, 3 of 8 from downtown, like another great shooting game. But, yeah, if Fred, I, I don't know what's going on with his knee. I don't know if it's, you know, if he would even, he said publicly that he doesn't want people to talk about it. He just says like, I'm playing, you know, you know, judge me on my merits of what I do on the floor. And then, okay, then Fred has not been as sharp defensively or as sharp offensively as he has been for most of the season to this point. And, you know, other Raptors players are stepping up, but Fred with, I think, uh, another underwhelming performance, especially offensively. Defensively in this game, I, I think that he was still 
pretty good. I, I think he had like four steals in this one and, you know, some very timely dig downs. He got his nose in the in the dirty places as well. So that was nice to see. But offensively, he's just not bringing a ton of what he was able to bring for long stretches of this season. So, yeah, that that's tough. And then Pascal, you got to hit your free throws, A. They didn't lose because he missed free throws. Like they lost by five. He missed, he split a pair at the end. They lost because the Lakers were hitting all their threes and, you know, the shot making had to be on quite a level to get back there. But Pascal disappointed a little bit down the stretch because Scotty on one possession actually did get doubled. And, uh, you know, Pascal was very low usage in this game. I think to his credit, decided that he would take a step back and try and service the likes of Scotty and Gary when he was late because Pascal, when the Raptors were succeeding on offense late, he actually had the ball a lot of times, but he was delegating and like running through screening actions and then putting guys in the right place. And that was awesome to see. But there were a couple times as the game got close in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter and then overtime where you could see there was a lull in the offense and the ball was in his hands. And because a guy like Scotty was receiving so much attention, that was the point where Pascal was supposed to go to work. He had two buckets like that in the the clutch time in the fourth quarter. But I think that, you know, when he got blocked by LeBron, that showed a lack of awareness. And like certainly he had Austin Reeves there, but he might have known that LeBron is going to come over and help side like crazy. And, you know, there were other plays to be made. And then there were a couple plays where he was just like a little bit more milk toast, a little bit more hesitant than he should have been. Like he should have been able to just eat in space. And he did against winning Gabriel, but you got to hit the free throws then, man. And uh, yeah, so he left he left me wanting. But also, the Raptors aren't remotely close. Um, without in in all these close games, even if if you think back to Miami, Pascal Siakam, his place in the Raptors defense as a help side rim protector, especially late in games, like Precious Sachua is better all game until the last five minutes. Pascal has just been an unbelievably good rim protector late in games, and he's just. He, he's a guy who turns up and turns down his defense accordingly. Like he's at that point in his career that a lot of players get to. And late in games, Pascal's defense is mind blowing. And I thought he was really, really strong and impactful down the stretch too. But yeah, the offense delegated, did good things most of the game. And I think had really good process, but especially just making sure that Scotty got his shine and stuff like that. But still, man. You just need a little bit more punch late and he couldn't bring it. And it's tough to just ask a guy to come out and give you punch. And especially when you think about like, you know, built different, who 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 is wired a certain way or whatever. Pascal would have been nice. But also he was a guy who was delegating to a lot of other players like Gary on both of his three point shots. Those are possessions that started with the ball in Pascal's hand. And if Pascal doesn't delegate, then Gary doesn't end up making those shots and yeah, that's that's the other thing I would talk about is the shot making of Gary and Precious. I mean, Precious showed a lot of offensive pop in this game. He he continues to. He's been on a run where, you know, he's he's coordinating and sequencing a lot of the strong aspects of his his skills together so that he can extend advantages, take advantage of advantages and create advantages like he's he's creating and finishing on some of these plays and Other plays, like he's just creating some other plays. He's just finishing, especially from three. That's all super meaningful. That's good. And Gary, I I really hope this is, I hope this is him turning the corner. He's just been shooting so poorly and he he came on so strong at the end of this game. And there were some tough ones that he made. And certainly there's like, you know, ice in his veins comments that are well-deserved. And he, he really turned it up down the stretch. I thought he was tremendous. Like, he just is a catch and shoot guy, but also taking that little pick and roll with Pascal and then getting into his his rhythm and then hitting that big three before. Obviously, it was um, Russ who ended up hitting his, but I'll be damn, man. That's that's tough to see. But yeah, Gary, I hope this is a sign of things to come. And especially since I don't know if his shooting performance is inherently tied to how much he gives a crap on defense, but he, he had a lot of defensive mix-ups in this game and so yeah that wasn't too good to see I I was happy that Chris uh, Boucher played more than Thad in this game Thad is too low usage to be making the number of mistakes that he does and I know Chris Boucher probably pulled the trigger on a couple threes that he shouldn't have especially early in the clock 
but I still think I'd rather take that than Thad just completely gumming up guaranteed buckets. Like, yeah, Chris Boucher maybe threw away an offensive possession, but he's, you know, you have like a third of a chance of it going in. But Thaddeus Young, because of his hesitation in his own shot making and, you know, the way that players are trying to respond to how he handles the ball and how he decision makes, there's so much mix ups because he is, he's just, he's been really poor since joining the Raptors. And yeah, so I was happy Boucher played more than him, but I didn't think either stood out. And Banton, you know, he got a run in, but it was only six minutes. It wasn't too much going on. Kim was, Kim was all right, but there's just, there's not a lot going offensively. If, if other guys stop making shots, Precious immediately becomes a guy who's just way better to have on the court because of the three point shooting. But <sighs> yeah, man, uh, Reggie Evans Ward, it's Scotty. It couldn't possibly be anybody else. Um, like if you want it to be anybody else, my apologies, but I couldn't possibly give it to anybody besides Scotty. He, he was just so good. He, he put in so much work, like, you know, 13 defensive rebounds in addition to the 31 points, the career high. It's just, uh, yeah. Okay, top quick reaction comment is uh, um, from Mr. Tonic. It says, so the D-bag posters had to wait six games to act out. The bio really backed up, end quote. Okay, so I'll assume there's, <laughs> I'll assume there's drama in the comment section. Do I dare... Scroll down. Do I? I'm scrolling. Uh, I haven't found anything, so I'm just gonna leave it there. You know, it would keep the vibes all right with it. Sorry that the the comment section is outrageous right now, or at least I I'd assume it was if you're using the term bile. But listener, uh, if you're looking for the drama, for the gossip, for the tea, very sorry I didn't provide it. But if you were just coming for my take on this past game, uh, yeah, I I hope you enjoyed it. The the Lakers just made outrageous shot after outrageous shot the Raptors made a lot of great plays to stay in it but gummed up possessions that were absolutely imperative down the stretch and it's tough them's the breaks man thanks for tuning in whether you got into it in the morning or at night have a blessed day and goodbye